Hello guys, in this video we will see how we can create a Flappy Bird clone in Godot. The game will not be exactly the same, but the mechanics will be inspired on it. The final result is this that's running at the screen now. I've published this game at Play Store, so if you want to check it, the link is at the description. As this video is longer than usual, I have decided to put timestamps on it, so you can jump to the part that you want to see, if you don't want to see everything. And if you like the video, please don't forget to like it, subscribe, leave a comment, this all really motivates me to make more videos. And so let's go! We will create a parallax background, a player, the obstacles, a splash screen, and the sound. So let's start creating our background scene. First, add a parallax background node, then inside of it we create a parallax layer and inside of it a sprite. Now we can drag an image to our sprite to become our background. Let's just uncheck the set the red option. And now we need to set the mirroring to make our background be like an infinity background. And now to finish our background, we just need to create a script and set the movement. And we will do everything inside the physics process in a single line. We just need to set the scroll offset of our parallax background and decrease it at every frame. And this will be the result of the background moving. After that, we can create a new scene, and this new scene will become our player. We can rename the 2D node to player. Inside it, we can create a kinematic body 2D. And inside the kinematic body, we create a animated sprite and a collision shape. And then we have to adjust our animation sprite, creating a new frame and linking a sprite sheet to it. And now I just have to mark displaying option. And there is our animated bat. Now we need to adjust the collision shape to make it collide. And now to finish our player, we need to create a script to define things about it, like how it moves or how gravity affects it. So let's start defining some variables. And I have already tested these values that I'm using to keep the video shorter. I think at this point the variables explain themselves. There is just a variable for gravity, a variable for velocity and a variable for, for the jump speed. And now we need to define inside the physics process function how these variables will affect our player. First, as our player just goes up and down, we need to adjust the velocity in the y-axis to be constantly updated by the gravity. And then we will use the move and slide function from our kinematic body to move our body in the given velocity and the resultant linear velocity is set to our velocity variable. And after that we need to check if a collision occurs. And we will create a simple custom function to do that. 
We will start our check collision function using the getSlightCount. This getSlightCount function returns how many collisions occurs since the last movement slide loop. As we are just iterating at collisions, if there is no collision, there will be no iteration. This getSlightCollision function can be used to get multiple collisions if multiple collisions occurs since the last movement slide call. As in this game, we will have at maximum one collision, we can save it directly in this collision variable. Then we will look if the collider of this collision is not named no. If it's not no, we can kill our player. Further, I will rename the top and the bottom of our screen as no, so that our player can collide with them and don't die. Now we will handle the input, so that our player can jump if the up arrow button is pressed. And then we are just setting the velocity to the jump speed. And this is the result of our player scene at the moment. And now let's just set this global variable to false to inform to our game that our player is dead. This global variable doesn't exist at the moment, but we will create a script now to handle these variables and global functions too. And so, in this script, we can define all the variables and functions that we want to access from any script of our game. Like this variable to define if our player is alive or dead, the points, we can create a function to add points, we can create a function to restart the game, and so on. And so any script can add points or restart the game in the same way, because they just need to call these functions. And to make this script be accessible for any other script, we need to define it as an autoload. To do that, we go to Project Settings, Autoload, and add it here. And now we can create a new scene for our obstacles. So let's rename our node 2D. And inside it, we can create a kinematic body, a sprite, a collision shape, and a visibility notifier. Now we can adjust our sprite node, putting an image inside it. Then we adjust our collision shape to be the size of the image. And then we can create our script to manage the obstacle movement. And now that we have our script created, we can adjust the visibility notifier to send a signal when the obstacle is out of the screen. And so we can use the signal to kill the obstacle when it leaves the screen. Now we will configure the obstacle movement inside the physics process function. First we will check if the player is alive. And this is how we can access our variables inside our global script. Then we adjust the position of the obstacle in the x-axis. And then we can create a variable here just to control if this object has already counted points to our player or not. It's not important at the moment, but it will be useful later. Oh, and here I forget to put these nodes inside the kinematic body. So let's just drag them. And now we can create our main scene that will handle our player, the obstacles, the background and everything else that we need. Let's just drag our player, our background, save our scene. And now we will add a static body and inside the static body we will put two collision shapes. We will not put any sprite on these collision shapes, because we will use them just to limit the top and the bottom to make our player stay on screen. 
and we will rename our static body to no. That's because we defined in our player script that objects named no will not kill our player. And so we can see that our player cannot leave the screen anymore. Now we can create a main script and add our obstacles. So we can start preloading our obstacle scene. After that we can create a function to spawn our obstacles. And here we will need a random generator, because we need our obstacles to spawn in different heights. Then we call randomize to generate a new seed for our random number. Then we define the range of our numbers. And now we can create two variables for our objects. In reality, these two variables will be used to make a single object, because one of them will be the top part of the obstacle and the other the bottom part. Then we can create a ready function. And here, first we will set our global alive variable to true, and then we can spawn our obstacle. Now let's continue our spawn obst function. Now we will create our first obstacle instance and define its position. After that we just have to add this object to our scene. And now we can create our second object at the same way. As I said before, one of them will be the top part of the obstacle and the other will be the bottom part. Now let's just create a short function to restart our game, so we can easily restart it while we are testing. To do that, we just will call our global restart function, pressing the arrow key down. And so we can see we can restart the game, our obstacle is being created, our player flies correctly. We just need to make a logic to create multiple obstacles. And we will do that inside the physics process function. First we will check if our player is alive, then we check if the current object position in the x-axis is smaller than the player position in the x-axis, and if so, we can spawn a new obstacle. And that's it, let's test it. And this is our Flappy Bird clone already working, but as we want to make a full mobile game, we need to create some extra stuff, like a point system, a uh, splash screen, sounds, and so on. Let's start creating support to touch screen so that we can play it on mobile. As our game just has one input, we can create a touch screen button and make it cover the entire screen. And now we can just copy the action that's making our player jump and paste it inside this action field in our touch screen button. Now we just need to set this option to simulate touch screen with a mouse so that we can test it at the computer. And now we can move our player with a mouse click or if we export our game to mobile, we can move the player touch in the screen. Now we can create our point system. To do that, we will start creating a new scene. We will select the user interface. Our main node here 
will be a control node and inside it we will put a color rect and a rich label text. Now we can adjust the size and the position of our color rect. This will be the background for our points. We can change the color too if we want. Now we can set the position of our rich label text. We can put it inside the color rect to make it align with it. And now we can create our script to handle the points. This script will be really simple and it will just update the points on our pano. And this line will just keep updating our rich label text with the points inside the global's points value. Now let's increase the size of our text a bit, so that the player can see them. And we will change our font too. We will use a TTF font, they are really easy to find, you can download it at Google Fonts, for example. And so let's go to Custom Fonts, select Normal Font, New Dynamic Font, Edit, and here at Font Data we have to load our TTF font. and we will increase the size of our font at the settings. And so we can write something here, just to see if we like the size, the font, the positioning. And now we can go to our main scene and add our point scene. And we can see here that our pano collapsed. And that happened because we hadn't defined a minimum size for it. To fix that, we just need to set a minimum size to our point scene or set the size directly at the main scene, as I will do now. And this is the actual state of our game. We have two more adjustments to make. First, we are not updating our points in any place, so our pano will just show zero. We can easily fix that on our main script, adding a point when the player passes an obstacle. And so we can save it and run it and see the result. And so we can see that the points are being counted, and now we just need to make a fix to avoid our obstacles to go over our pano. In normal nodes, we can define if a node will be over or under another node, setting the z-index, but control nodes don't have a z-index, so we need to create a new node to adjust that. So we can create a simple node2d, rename it to points and drag our control pano to it. And now we have the z-index option. As our nodes have the default value of 0, we just need to set this to 1, and so it will be over everything. And this is the result. Our next step now will be create a splash screen to show the score and to allow our player to restart the game. So let's create a new scene for our splash screen. It will be a user interface. And inside the control node, we will put a sprite, a color rect, and a touch screen button. Then, inside the color rect, we can create a rich text label. 
and now inside the sprite we will put an image that will become the background of the splash screen. We have the button already drawn at the image because we really don't need it. We will make the entire splash screen be a button so that the player just can restart the game. So let's save our scene and then we can adjust our touch screen button to cover the entire splash screen. Now let's adjust and set the positioning of our color rect and our rich text label. And now, again, we can adjust our font and the font size of our text. Now we create a script and we can start using it to handle our touch screen. And to do that we just need to send a signal from our touch screen to inform when it's being pressed. And inside this function, we will just call again our restart function. And then, inside the ready function, we will update our rich text label, so that when our splash screen is called, it will update the text. Here we use this str function to cast our integer to a string, because the rich text label just shows strings. And we can use the center tag to centralize our text. And this is our splash screen finished. And now we need to go to our main scene and add this splash screen to our game. As we want it to be created dynamically, we need to insert it by script. So first let's preload our splash scene. Then we create this splash variable to hold our instance later. And here we make a test. If the player is not alive and there is no splash screen created, we can create a new splash screen. And then we add it to the scene. Oh, here I forgot to make the touch screen button visible. The button need to be visible to work, okay? And now we can test it. And there is it. If the player dies, the splash screen opens, and if we click or touch on it, the game restarts. Now we will create a way to store the best score and show it at the splash menu. So first, we will create a script to handle it. Then we create a static function to save our data.
This function can be static because we don't need to instantiate this script. Then we create this safe content variable just to hold our global record. As we just will use this function to save a record, we can hard code it. Then we create this file variable just to hold the instance of a file object. Then we open the file in write mode. Use this function to store our content inside the file. And we can close the file. Then we create another function to load our data from the file to our game. So first we create a file variable to hold an instance of our file object. Then we make a test to see if this file really exists. And if so, we can open it in read mode. Then we can get the data that is inside our file to this content variable. Then we can close our file and return the content. And here we just make an else to call our save data function if the file doesn't exist. So our save data function can create a new file. And we will make this saver script become a singleton2, like our global script, so that we can save and load our points from any script. And here I will create an extra helper function just that I don't need to inform the file name every time I want to see if the file exists. So this function will just check if the file exists and return true or false. And now we can go to our main script and here at the ready function we will make a check so that when our game starts we will first check if the file exists if the file exists we will make another test to see if our global record is zero if the global record is zero we will try to load any recorded record and we need to make an else here because if our file doesn't exist we will call the save data function to create this file and now we can go back to our globals singleton and here first we will create this record variable that we are using at the main script and then we can create a check record function this function will be used to check if the actual punctuation of the player is bigger than the actual record and if so the punctuation will be saved as the new record And now we go to our player script and here we will check the record when the player dies. After that we can go to our splash screen and here we need to make some adjustments in our script too. We could make the record check here instead of making it at the player, but the result will be the same. I will let it here, so we will have a double check. But you really don't need to do that. You can choose one of them, or here, or at the player. And now we will duplicate the color rect with the text label that we have used to our points. And we will use this new duplicated to make our record label. After that we just need to change its position. And now we can go back to the script and configure the label to show our record. So we can copy the line that we use to show the points and change the name of the node that we want to access. 
Then we change the text and the variable that we want to show. And now we can run the game to see the result. And we can see that's showing points and the record. And now we can try to beat the record to confirm that's working. And so we can see that the record is being updated. Now let's just make some minor adjusts to make our label look better. And we can use other tags, like this wave tag. And that's the result. Not that much better, but I will let it so for now. Now, to finish our project, we will create the sounds. To handle our sounds, we will create a new script, and this script will become a singleton 2, like our globals. We will create some variables, like muted, to define if the game is muted or not, flap, that will get the flap sound, points, to the point sound, and fail, to the fail sound. Then, at our ready function, we will create a audio stream and set it to these three variables, and we will also add it to the scene. To open this box to replace a word, we can select the area that we want to search to replace and press Ctrl R. And then we create these three functions to play the sounds. And we need to drag the actual sound files to be loaded inside our stream. And to finish our script, we need to set it as a singleton at auto load. And now we just need to go to the scripts and define when our sounds should be played. Like the points, sound should be played when the player make a point, the fail when the player dies, and the flap when the player flaps or jumps. And so let's see our final result. And there is our full working Flappy Bird alike clone. If you want to download the Play Store version, link at the description. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up, share, subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this. If you have some question, please ask at the comments. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Bye.